Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, so we've been talking about the house a lot for the past couple weeks and today is the first day that some that has gone by where I don't really have anything new to report on that. Fortunately, something else kind of interesting I thought happened that I wanted to talk talk a little about and uh, I wanted to show you because it was kind of kind of special to me. Um, you may, most of you know that my father passed away a few months ago and uh, my sister and I were in the process of cleaning out their house uh, when this all happened and we came across a bunch of like documents and photographs and newspaper clippings and stuff like that. My sister kind of took custody of that and for the past couple months she's been kind of plowing through all this trying to figure out what's worth keeping and what isn't. Now she called me about a month ago and uh, told me about all this stuff she found and asked, you know, if I wanted any of it. And I said, yeah, I mean, if it's photos of, of the family or anything related to the family, I'd definitely like to have it. And so she said, okay, cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it to you. And now a month has gone by since I heard from her on that. And I was actually starting to worry a little bit that either she had forgotten to do it or that it had, been, had shipped and gotten lost somewhere and I just didn't know it had shipped. Uh, but fortunately that wasn't the case. It just took a little longer, I guess, for her to get everything sorted and packed up because that package arrived today. And um, I, like I said, you, you may recall that I brought my father's laptop home after the funeral and found a treasure trove of, of hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of photos that my dad had shopped over the past uh, 10 or 15 years on his uh, series of cameras. And that was a very, very exciting thing to find. Well, the stuff I got today is probably equally and maybe even more so exciting because this is many, many old photos of grandparents and great grandparents and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews from, you know, some of these photos are more than 100 years old. And I was very excited to find that and I decided I wanted to kind of take a day or two or three or something and show them to you and just properly document them. So I've actually kind of thumbed through the photos already, kind of put them into categories because it looked like it was just kind of a lot of just kind of loose stuff and there was no rhyme or reason to it. So I tried to, you know, organize it somewhat. And now we're going to take a look at some of this stuff. So uh, let's go dive into my uh, personal family history. This is going to be interesting. So here's the kind of first look at the uh, sorted treasure trove of stuff that I've uh, found here. So let's just kind of look through some of this stuff. This is like a newspaper article. Um, of my parents when they were from their wedding and that's kind of cool you know you don't get to see something like that very often um, this one's comics on the back but this one's a that's a photo of my grandfather uh, my grandfather and my grandmother were both uh, singers and performers in their youth and in fact my grandfather loved singing for basically the rest of his life he was a baritone she was a soprano and basically they met uh, because of their common interest in uh, singing and uh, they did some plays and stuff like that in fact you'll see some uh, some uh, collectibles i've got from their from their history uh, doing plays now this is a newspaper article, uh, uh, and that's my grandmother on my mom's side, uh, so my mom's mom, and this is a photo and a story they did from her when she uh, retired from her job. She was an administrator, and uh, she'd been doing that for 36 years, and this was a newspaper article from March 31st, uh, 1976, uh, commemorating her retirement. Now this article is kind of cool because this is uh, my, I believe, great-grandfather on my father's side, Edwin Z. Roll. And we're going to hear quite a bit about him because he was uh, kind of a big figure in, in the history of the Rolls because uh, for, for one thing, he started out his life with a different last name. Um, the original uh, family name for my family didn't al wasn't always Roll. Based on this man, based on the efforts of this man, it went from Spatovsky to Roll. And in fact, one of the, one of the documents I found was uh, 
a court document uh, from when he uh, did, did, uh, did the transition and legally changed his name. And basically, the reason he did it is he said it was just Spitovsky was too hard to pronounce. And too many people were having problems with it. So he actually took his wife's maiden name, and that's where the role name came from. Hello, friends, and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Spitovsky. Nah. Now, this is another news article uh, from May 5th, 1976, and it's a, there was a sort of a this is your life for my grandmother, uh, Signe Wallstrom, who is my mom's mom. And so that is her right there, and that's her son, and uh, I'm not sure who that is on that side of him, of her. Let's see if it says here. No, it doesn't say who it is. Uh, uh, but that's a photo. My mom made a secret trip to Minnesota to participate in this. Uh, my grandmother didn't even know she was there until she popped out from behind the curtain. And also her brother and his wife, Oscar and Della Eklund, who, uh, you know, I knew, you know, they passed away a long time ago, and I remember them. Uh, they were, they were, because they were, they lived down here in, San, they lived in San Diego, uh, when I lived in California, so we visited them a lot during their older, during their later years. And then, of course, that's my grandmother, Signe, right there. And this apparently is another part of the article, because that's uh, from the same day uh, and from a, uh, from a previous page. And so that's her doing her, you know, giving her, uh, you know, giving some remarks, and also her with my grandfather. So yeah, I, I missed him. He he passed away in 1982, so he's been gone for a long time. Now this stack of documents is very, very important to me because it's a lot of uh, documentation about family trees and stuff like that. And uh, starting with different families. So this is starting with Charles Brocky. Charles, and Brocky was my uh, father's mom's maiden name. So this is uh, starting with that family and working their way through all the uh, different family names, different you, you know different people who were you know who got married, you know who was who was related to who, you know birth dates, death dates, uh, you know when they were married, all that all that fun stuff, who their kids were. You know I know I know my father or my grandfather and my father both in their later years were you know, really obsessed with genealogy. Uh, and so a lot of this stuff is, uh, are like handwritten notes, I think by my grandfather, uh, my grandfather, Robert Rowell, uh, detailing who all these people were. He spent a lot of time putting this all together. And I mean, this is, you know, handwritten stuff by my grandfather who's been gone for, you know, 15, 20 years now. A lot of valuable stuff here. I love. I'm gonna. I'm gonna love going through all this. And I'm not gonna show all of it, but this is a computer document that my father did. I think he tried to take the information that his father had put in there and put it into a more uh, organized method. You know, into a computer format. Uh, but look at all this stuff, and it's just page after page of, of uh, handwritten documents, you know, showing different family members and when they were born, when they died. I'm going to love going through all this. Uh, now, a lot of this stuff is very... Actually, I see something. Yeah, there, there's a family member that uh, served in the American Revolution. I just saw that as I was... Uh, yeah, there's another one. Holy cow. So that's exciting. Now a lot of this stuff is loose, uh, you know, it was just loose in the box. So I just actually went out and bought a bunch of like uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet protectors and some notebooks. And I wanna try and, you know, try and protect some of this stuff. So, you know, after I'm done here, I'm gonna, gonna very gently pack all this stuff into, a, into sheet protectors and into a three ring binder so we can keep it safe. Now this here was something I was very excited to find out. This is the senior class photo uh, from my father's uh, high school graduating class, class of 1956. And I was looking through the photo with a magnifying glass, 
trying to find my father, and that is him right there. Let's see if we can get this to focus for us. Yeah, that is my father right there in the graduating class in front of the, uh, looks like in front of uh, Washington, D.C., if the, the, if the label's right. So there you go, right in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Huh? That's cool, right? And of course here we have some more contemporary things. Uh, some of you may know I was an Eagle Scout, so my father kept the uh, official announcement from when my Eagle ceremony was. On February 6, 1982, he has the brochure from my baccalaureate service. That happened at the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, so that was kind of fun. That was the first time I'd ever gotten to go in there. The announcement from my graduation, 1982. And then some of this stuff here. These are like uh, uh, little, uh, little brochures or, you know, whatever for uh, some, of the, some of the performances that my grandmother and grandfather did. And I noticed I was digging through here and I saw their names in here. They were both in here. Remember I told you that they... Uh, that they met uh, because they were uh, performing together, because they were singing together, because they were in the same singing troupe. So there's my grandmother there, Dorothy Brocky. And then you're gonna go back here further into the uh, into the brochure here, and there is my grandfather, Robert Rowell, right there. And it turns out. I believe I found some photos from that too. Here's a news, newspaper clipping. Uh, that's my grandmother in the front here in that beautiful dress. I have more, more photos of that dress. But this is from June 9th, 1932. There's a, a very old photo of my grandmother. Let's see if we can get a date on that. Yeah, 1930, they're saying a recital, it's a recital picture. But yeah, she was she was very attractive, wasn't she? And there's her in that dress that I just showed you. Like I said, these are old, old photos. March 1932, Dorothy Brocky. Look at that dress. Like I said, I'm going to frame some of these. This is a this is that photo we saw in the newspaper clipping a second ago. Looks like they flipped it, but that's okay. They sometimes do that. There's another picture of my grandmother as a young woman uh, in 1927, according to this one. High school graduation picture, huh? Here's another picture. Uh, uh, program from a uh, recital thing that they did and I saw let's see where is it here Dorothy Brocky yeah she was in there I don't think my grandfather was in this one but I found her name on that and that was very cool this is a bunch of newspaper articles uh, for for a program for a show that they were doing at the Schubert Club and uh, various ones that talk about uh, you know, my grandmother being in it. And there's a uh, actual cover photo, you know, where it introduces her as the soloist. And here's another one. And this one's kind of cool because uh, this one has both my grandfather right here and my grandmother right behind him. Yeah, that, like I said, they met doing, doing this and they fell in love and... Uh, Spent the rest of their life together. Another newspaper article. I think that's a. I think that's actually a review of a uh, of a show that my uh, grandmother was in. Let's see if we can get that to focus for us. Come on, focus. You can do it. There we go. Yeah. So uh, where did I see her name? Right there. Dorothy Brocky. Here she is again, uh, second from the left. Had a beautiful red hair, huh? And again. Okay, now this one's very, very cool. This is a, 
a legal document I found uh, that uh, talks about when my uh, great grandfather, I believe, Edwin Zbitovsky, this is the document uh, where he changes his name. And so this is very cool. Uh, resident of Chicago, Cook County, Illinois, 1913, on this uh, and on oath de deposes and says that. The, of that being desirous of changing his name as above given for the reason that the same is long and difficult to of pronunciation and for con convenience in using his name. He therefore states and gives notice to all that may be concerned therein that, this na that his name from now on shall be changed from Edward Zab Zabotovsky to Edward Zabotovsky Roll. And he took his, took his wife's maiden name. And there it is, signed by him. 1920, 26th day of April. Very cool. That's something that I'll probably end up framing at some point. All right? And yeah, now this is, uh, this is something that uh, Edward Zbitovsky, uh, later Edward Rowell, wrote uh, when, when he was talking about the passing of his first wife, Alice. So this is, this happened literally, he wrote this just literally a few days after she died. And uh, yeah, that's another uh, really uh, great document that I'll want to keep. Now this stack is very cool because this is a bunch of programs and bulletins and the likes from different marriages, different funerals, different ceremonies that happen on throughout the years. I don't even know who these people are, but this is a uh, a uh, copy of the bulletin from their marriage on December 28, 1979. Catherine Helen Lang and James Joseph Fee. So that's, that's very cool. This one here, this one's uh, actually my birth announcement. So that's kind of cool too, you know? How many people have a copy of their own birth announcement, right? This one's also very special. This is the wedding announcement for my parents. Mr. and Mrs. Harold T. Wallstrom request the honor of your presence for the marriage of their daughter, to a daughter, Carolyn, to Mr. David W. Rowell on Saturday, the 27th of July, 1963 at two o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm, yeah, I wanna keep that definitely, right? This is a Okay, this is actually the bulletin from uh, that ma from the mar from my parents' wedding. So yeah, that's everything that that happened there. Very cool to have that too, right? In remembrance, that is the uh, the memorial uh, bulletin from my grandfather Harold T. Wallstrom. He was the one that passed away in 1982. Um, he had cancer, and uh, he he went uh, went fairly quickly. Here's a, another. Yeah, okay. This is actually the bullet, and that was kind of a memorial uh, for him. This is the actual church bulletin from the funeral service. Very special. In remembrance. Okay, this is a this is a uh, a uh, memorial thing from William H. Brocky. That's my my dad's mom's father, and he passed away in 1965. So yeah, I've had that's been here for a while. Here's also a couple of uh, uh, newspaper articles talking about his passing. So that's very cool too. Okay. Here, this is this is great too. This is a uh, uh, an invitation to my grandmother's funeral. Mr. and Mrs. William G. Brocky request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their daughter Dorothy to Mr. Robert Z. Rowell, Saturday evening, August twenty eighth, nineteen thirty seven. It's at eight p.m. And then included in with the uh, the invitation. This is a. Uh, uh, an article from a newspaper uh, commemorating the uh, the marriage. So, for the society editor, 
August 29th, 1937. It's the whole story of the wedding. I didn't even see that before. Now here's another newspaper clipping from my parents' wedding. And that's kind of cool. And then we're getting into a section that there's a member of my family that I would like to talk to you a little bit about. We aren't quite there yet. This is uh, something from Edward Roll. He was a professor at UC Berkeley, and this is his death announcement. But then we get into stuff like this. This is a newspaper article. Uh, it's really, really faded, and actually I have a... Uh, an actual copy of the article. I think this may be like a Xerox of it or something and it's really faded over time. But the article is Mom frets over son 46 uh, who's 2200 feet up a sheer cliff. And that that son, his name is Galen Roll. And Galen Roll is a uh, kind of a, a legend in the family because he's a famous photographer and also a famous uh, rock climber. If you've ever been to Yosemite National Park and gone into any of the uh, any of the gift shops, you've probably seen uh, photo books uh, of him, or you know of that he, the photos uh, that he's uh, taken. Uh, according, and I just discovered this myself. Apparently, he was the uh, one of the first men to ever climb Half Dome. Yeah, here's, here's that original article I was telling you that looked like it was all blurred out here or kind of faded from the Xerox. But he was a, a very, very famous photographer. In fact, uh, you know, if you go to Yosemite and look, like I said, look in the gift shops, you're going to see Ansel Adams, you're going to see Galen Roll. And uh, Galen Roll was my father's cousin. So my grandfather on my dad's side, uh, Robert Roll, had a brother named Edward, and Edward's son was Galen. And so Galen is a very famous member of our family. Unfortunately, Galen uh, passed away about 15 or 20 years ago. He was on an airplane with his wife, and the airplane crashed. They were both killed. This is a newspaper article here uh, commemorating Galen and his friend Warren Harding. I don't think any relationship to the president, but... Uh, his friend Warren Harding, who were the first people to ever climb Half Dome. Two climbers who completed the first ascent of the 2200 foot south face of, of Half Dome. So that was very cool. More articles of him, photos of him. He also, he's also climbed uh, uh, K2 and Everest and took all sorts of great pictures. Yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar with what Half Dome is, that's Half Dome on the, on the, on the far side here. This is El Capitan here and Half Dome. And Half Dome, basically, it's a big round dome-shaped rock with a flat side on it. And that was what he climbed. He climbed up that face right there. You can go up the back side pretty easily, but he went up the first for the, the front side. See, there's another, that's another Xerox of the, of the commemoration of him uh, uh, first climbing that. And then he had a, uh, he had a uh, company called Mountain Light Photography, and that was, uh, he published all of his books and stuff like, all of his photo books under that. So, yeah, that's Galen Roll, uh, all sorts of stuff there. I have a bunch of his uh, photo books, so... You know, that's, it, it's very cool to kind of uh, see all this.